is no one, according to the basic rules of Kabbalah, it says very simply, if the creator is endless being of goodness, there's no way that he created somebody not to receive that goodness. Which means, we'll have to go, each one of us, seven billion people and more, we'll have to go through trials and tribulations, study, experiences till finally, we're all going to find that place. According to Kabbalah, you have no choice on the end result. You have a choice on the road to get there. How long, what kind of experiences you're going to experience on the road, but the end result, everybody must arrive to that place. I talk about to people from Africa, from South America, <laughs> from North America, from Europe, Muslims, Buddhists, uh, uh, Hindu, Brahmin, Sikh, you just name all different religions. I don't think I taught all of them, but I taught a lot of them. Once I was teaching in the house of the Indian ambassador here, in the, not far from here. And one day there were representatives of most of the population of the country, of the world. The Chinese ambassador and his wife, the American, the, um, there were a few of them. And everybody felt very comfortable. Wow. So when you see that, how everybody has the common language, if you know how to, to find it, it's all in Kabbalah, you can talk to anyone. This is the universal language. So everybody can. So in terms of, you said you're optimistic about the world. So where, where are we going? According to Kabbalah, there is no way out of it. You, you can't stay away from it. You, everyone has to come to it. So it's not optimistic. It's realistic. Okay? In a way that a person from the outside will say, oh, that's optimistic. How would that happen? As you see in the last few decades, Kabbalah is everywhere. Every language, you can read it on it, on the internet. You can watch classes live, recorded in almost every language. So uh, it's spreading. Not, I don't think it's uh, done enough. That's why I'm putting my foot. Uh, but how the, the, the goal will be finally, I think, is to create living communities of people that study Kabbalah and help each other because otherwise it's very painful and it's too slow. And I see that happening in the near future. Today it's like you can find it everywhere. And each one is teaching in a different way and different people need different ways to study Kabbalah. When you build communities of people that really work on that and they really care for each other, the result is amazing. And as my, uh, one of my things that I did, I did my master's degree was about uh, pharmacology. So when I'm starting a Kabbalah community, and the first thing that was the first time that I did it, I started to realize they take less medicines. They're less sick. They feel less pain. They are happier, so the immune system is much better. So you can see that happening. It's answers to many other questions like, why people are so sick today, why there's so much, why cancer and other diseases are like a plague. One of the main reasons is that people are very lonely. Once people live in a community, there's no community anymore. Okay? And if you want to build a community, you have to build it on a spiritual background. Otherwise, it won't keep together. People will just run away to be by each other. People today don't have the energy to be, in a, to be part of a couple. Not talking about the community. You have to listen to somebody and to, and to listen. And not to ask them to listen to you all the time. So people don't have the, the energy for that either. So less and less people are getting married. What do you think has gone on in the last three to five decades that has made Kabbalah so popular in the world? It was the time. It was the time. That's the way it says in the books. Many Kabbalists were speaking that this, that has to be done.